Hi friends, today I'm going to be doing another sculpture video. This one is of a dog, so I thought I'd have my intro be with my cool dog, who I can only get to stay on camera while I'm bribing with a treat. Here's my sculpting video of a dog. Yeah, hi. To start with, I'm using aluminum foil balled up and rolled and shaped into the basic shape of the sculpture that I'm going to make. Aluminum foil is a cheap and lightweight way to make the base or armature of your sculpture. Then I like to cover it in a layer of masking tape that sort of takes the bumps and ridges out of the aluminum foil. This is a piece of floral wire that I push through to form the leg bones of the sculpture. Uh, they're not staying perfectly in place by themselves, so I'm using some masking tape here to secure them a little bit. Once I put on the clay and bake it, they'll stay perfectly in place, but for now, masking tape will hold it. Then I roll out some Super Sculpey Medium Blend in my pasta roller and cover the entire sculpture in that, blending it in with my thumbs, cutting off excess with my X-Acto blade, and any air bubbles right there, you can see I sliced air bubbles and blend them back in. That gets rid of them nicely. This is a little pointy stick that I put in to be the neck. And now I'm using a wire brush that I bought at a craft store to make a fur texture on the entire sculpture. It's a short fur dog, so short little strokes. This part I use uh, rubbing alcohol to get rid of fingerprints. Now I'm rolling out some clay with a clay extruder tool, just like the ones you used to play with when you were a kid. I like to use them for arms and legs so that they're perfectly round as I put them over the armature and then blend them in with my fingers and the color shaper tool. Later I'll go over it with the wire brush again just to add that texture. Uh, now I'm shaping out the feet using a metal tool to put the toes in and I will blend it with my fingers and a color shaper tool here a little bit. Before I jump ahead to the head with aluminum foil, then using a cookie cutter to cut out some clay just to put over the head. I like to use a pinching technique like this and it leaves excess clay, but I just cut it off with an X-Acto blade. That's the way I find that I can get clay smoothest onto an armature or any uh, underneath structure. Smoothing it in and basically sticking it on and then I'm bulking it out a little more. The neck was just a little too thin. Using my fingers to blend it in. I like to use my fingers whenever I can. Some of the uh, crevices are too small. Now I'm looking for just the perfect eyes in my small box of eyes and I don't find them here. So I have to break into the large box of eyes. These are glass cabochons that have just an eye printed onto the back of it. Sometimes I paint them, but mostly I like to use these pre-printed cabochons. This is one of my favorite parts of any sculpture is starting to work on the face. I stick on the eyes and just immediately a pair of eyes makes something come to life more. I love this part because it just seems like the sculpture speeds up once I get to the face. Now I'm gonna roll a little ball for the nose and stick it on, uh, blending it with a ball stylus and putting in the nostrils. Uh, and now I'm gonna be rolling out little ropes of clay for the eyelids. First working on the upper eyelids, cutting off any excess with my X-Acto blade and blending it in with my fingers. I will come back with a color shaper to get the detailed blending later, but putting in the lower eyelids now. Again, cutting off the excess with my X-Acto blade. This part is where I cut in the shape of the mouth with this little metal tool. I got this tool online in a set for 10 bucks or something. Uh, just shaping out the mouth a little bit more with that and later I'll go over it in more detail. These are the ears. I'm shaping them out on the on my marble top and then putting in some bake and bond adhesive to stick it to the head uh, and blending it in with my finger then folding it over like a floppy doggy ear right there. Uh, I come in with a color shaper just to stick it on and blend it a little more and then I do the same thing for the other side of the head. Jumping ahead there, it's already done. Blending it in, it's starting to look like a dog. Coming back here with the 
brush tool just to add fur to the smooth bits that I just finished. Going over the face and everything with the brush tool. Try not to get too crazy with the texture because it's a short fur dog, but uh, putting some in. Now what this is, is gonna be the hind leg or as the scientists call it, the bum. They don't really call it the bum, no, no. Smoothing it along with my thumb and then doing the other side. This dog sits in that way where it sticks one leg under itself and the other one out. So here's the leg that goes under it, sticking it on, blending it with the color shaper tool. And then the other leg, blending that on, smoothing it on with the color shaper tool. Here I am going to be putting some bake and bond for the rear feet, shaping the toes of the rear feet. Bake and bond to the tips of the legs and then pushing those feet on. Uh, I don't show it there very well, but I have got some little metal pins that I put in just to make them stay on a little further. Uh, and pins are just thin floral wire, it's not actual pins. This is gonna be the tail, it's a little too long there, a little too thin, so I make it a little fatter. Dip that in some bacon bond and smooth it on with my fingers, making it a little doggy shape. That tool right there is a tool I made for fur and texture. It is actually pins, stuck on with some polymer clay to a wooden tool that I don't really use for anything else. Uh, and now it's time for paint. I like to go with a mid-tone color and just cover the entire thing without being very careful. In fact, in a minute here, I even just decide to cover over the eyes with paint. I'll go through later and scrape them. This thing I'm doing here is called the ink wash stage. It's a slightly darker shade of paint watered down with water and then you brush it on and wipe it off with a cloth. As you can see, I jumped way ahead. I've put all the details in, uh, the spots there, and now I'm just going for the eye details. This particular dog has nice black eyeliner and eyebrows. That's really true to the dog. It's got an expressive face. Now I'm just putting some very slightly uh, lighter colored highlights over the spots just to give them a little bit of texture and interest. And uh, in a minute here, I go through with the small brush to finalize the uh, spots and dots on this dog. Uh, yeah, here you can see I'm doing that. It's almost finished right here. Uh, in a second, I'll show you what it looks like. Uh, oh, before I do that, I'm scraping off with a X-Acto blade the paint that was on the glass cabochons. If you're very careful, you can do that without scratching them. So if you're gonna do that, take your time. Otherwise, you can just be really careful not to paint the glass. And that's what they look like up close. I think this turned out cute. I really like this dog. I've never met the dog in real life, even though I know the person who owns it. Uh, this was a commission piece. And I hope you really liked this video. If you did, please like, comment, subscribe. That's been shown to help people who make videos out. And also, as always, I do have an Etsy shop. I'll link that in the notes below. Thank you for watching, and we'll see you next time.